Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Daniela, and I moved to the United States three years ago to live with my sister and her husband. I moved from a small town in southern European Russia called Piatigorsk. This is a picture of it. It's kind of beautiful in here. <laughs> but in real life, it's not as much. So, uh, my hometown is a middle working class society in which I grew up seeing men working and putting food on the table and women staying home and tending to children. My best friend from my hometown, Masha, uh, wasn't exactly the one you would picture as a stereotypical Russian woman. She loved video games, she still loves memes, and she was not obsessed with the way she looked. Stereotypical Russian women, especially from suburban areas, pay a lot of attention to the way they look, because in order for them to thrive in society, they need to attract a rich husband. Even though Masha was not obsessed with the way she looked, it did not make her less beautiful as a person. I can recall the time when I was 13 years old, sitting, sitting in the dark corner of my bedroom with the bright light of the PC reflecting on my face. And this is where anyone could find me every day after school. The familiar Skype ringtone of video call caught my attention, and I was pleased to be greeted by Masha's familiar face. When we entered the new game, I began talking to the teammates of our game, and I couldn't help but notice that for the entire time Masha was quiet. Later that night, I asked her, Masha, why were you why were you not speaking during the game? And she responded to me, which means I don't want them to know that I'm a girl. It was only when I moved to the United States that I saw the gender role shift. When I began my relationship with my American girlfriend, our cultural differences were often the root of our disagreements. I was often frustrated with her actions since she did not want to bend for me and do things my way, which was obviously the right way to do it. She is a feminist and she opened my eyes on the problems of inequality and gender standards. After the discovery, I began paying attention to my family and our small roles that fit our genders. Um, for example, my sister Julia stays home and takes care of, of a child, and she is expected to look beautiful, while her, while her husband is expected to work and bring home money. Uh, the rules inside my family made me reflect on the societal gender roles in Russia and made me think about my relationships with my female friends. I asked myself, why do women in Russia expect, expect something from men, and men expect something from women? Why are there gender roles and why is it different in Russia than in other countries such as the United States? The answer is not surprisingly lies in history. The, after researching about the gender roles in USSR by reading the book Gender, State and Society in Soviet and Post-Soviet Russia, <laughs> I learned that during the Soviet times, women were expected to do more work and were, were more valuable to the country because of their ability to give birth. It was very needed because of the mass death rates during the World War II. As a result of this, many men felt resentful because, um, because women were treated better by the regime. The USSR promoted, promoted childbearing by providing special awards, such as freeing from labor camps and by giving the status of mother hero if a woman gave birth to 10 or more, more children. Um, here is a, an example of a mother hero, and this here right here says the praise to the mother hero. Um, so, there was also a lot of propaganda that, um, that given birth was a debt to society that the woman had to pay in order to create a strong communism. Since the goal was to create a strong new communism, all labor was needed, and this is why a lot of women received factory jobs. As you can see on those, um, on this propaganda pictures. This is a woman working, and this, is, this says the working woman. So, uh, stories about those working women were often highlighted in the newspapers that were portraying them as strong and brave. After the fall of USSR, the situation has changed dramatically, since women were tired of being expected to be both mothers and workers. Uh, they were not realistically able to work for hours and then take care of children. Men, though, were happy that women did not present any competition on the work field anymore, and they officially became the karmilets of family, which means a person who brings food to the table. Russian society reverted back to what it's comfortable with, women as mothers and men as breadwinners. 
As opposed to um, feminist, um, erratic, and tumultuous history in Russia, it is much more popularized in today's society. The popularity of feminism in Russia reflects the same pattern patterns as it does in the States. In more populated suburban areas, uh, urban areas such as Moscow or New York, uh, the forward thinking is cutting the edge of the ideas that are more popular and socially accepted. However, in rural areas and suburban areas such as my hometown, unfortunately, the ideas do not travel as quickly. Therefore, the problem of gender expectations has begun to disappear in the big cities, but it is still very relevant in more isolated areas. As I mentioned in the beginning of my talk, I'm from a, uh, from a southern Russian city called Piatigorsk. Because of being heavily populated by different cultures in which women come second in the family, I grew up in the society where it was okay to make fun of feminism. And this is why I had an image of feminists as being fat and ugly. And memes on social media just added fuel to the fire. Here's an example of a meme. It says that feminist women cannot go through because the door is too thin. Uh, you're not supposed to laugh at it. It's not funny. <laughs> um, so, and um, the song Femke Girl was by Russian artist Backflip of Kosmanov was uh, only popular last year, and it includes lyrics such as hairy legs, hairy armpits, fat legs, pumply butts, sweaty freaks, which portrays women and feminists as an ugly stereotype. I was misguided about the question of feminism, and I did not understand what it meant, and honestly, I didn't even want to figure it out, until I met a new friend, Alessia, who transferred to my 8th grade. Alessia was a feminist, with a feminist, and she explained to me of how of a great idea it actually is and what it's really all about. Alessia, in contrary to Masha, was more stereotypical, if I can say that, since she did enjoy to look great. However, because of that, I remember how she would often complain about the cat calling in the town. And honestly, I was never able to relate to her experiences. In fact, sometimes I even felt guilty. I felt guilty because I was a man living in the same community with those cat callers that, in few examples, were even my friends. This had taught me to not blindly follow the masses and try to figure out the truth myself. After researching about the, gen the feminist movement in Russia, I learned about many radical organizations like Pussy Riot. Uh, they advocate for the rights of women and LGBT community through their unconventional rock songs. Since they also sing about the flaws in politics, Russian government is trying to silence them by putting them in jail for some time. However, it does not work on them, since they're highly motivated, strong, liberal women. Even though they might not be powerful only by themselves, they influence many young people to join their movement and begin fighting for their rights. This shows how just the band of several people is able to create a change in society. My discovery, my personal discovery of feminism was long and had many flaws in it, since we learned by making mistakes. Since the early days uh, in Piatigors, I have grown as a person in regards to my treatment of women and my understanding of their experiences. Writing and performing this talk had taught me about the importance of speaking out against gender stereotypes and has motivated me to continue on this path for the rest of my life. When I showed this TED talk to Masha, she said that she thought it was very powerful and she was very proud of me. My friendship with Masha made me realize that not everyone in Russia is succumbing to gender roles, and it gave me hope that one day I'll see the change in my home country. As someone who has seen uh, Russian society and US society firsthand, I want each of you to find an inspiration in your personal life, such as the person you want to fight for, as I did for Masha. Thank you.